Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Sports Vault. Jersey Joe Archino back here. And very interesting quote to start off this segment. He's our generation's Michael Jordan. Those are the exact words of Derrick Rose, what he said last night before the Bulls took on the Los Angeles Clippers. And, you know, it's always a very interesting conversation to have, especially with Kobe kind of on his farewell tour in his final season. He's kind of always uh, been talked about and discussed. Where does he rank in the grand scheme of NBA history? Clearly, Derrick Rose not shying away from how he feels, where he stands, saying he is the greatest uh, of he's our generation is Michael Jordan. And, I think we have to start this segment off by establishing the fact that, yes, Michael Jordan is the greatest player of all time. There's no question about it. Six for six, what he did, what he meant to the game, the dominance he displayed. He's the greatest of all time. We're not here to argue that. What we're here to talk about, though, is is, is that exact quote. Is Kobe Bryant our generation's Michael Jordan? And I think the, the, the way we have to start this is by looking at this. Was there ever a question that Michael Jordan was the best player on his team? And that is an emphatic no. Michael Jordan was clearly always the number one man. He had Scottie Pippen. He had great players around him as well. But there's no question. There was never a doubt that Michael Jordan was the man for the Chicago Bulls. He was the best player in the league. There was never a doubt about that. Kobe, it's different. Was Kobe Bryant always the best player on on his team? I would say no. When you look at the first three titles that he won, I I, I think you look at the numbers, you look at the way that those finals went, Shaquille O'Neal was the best player on that team. And that's kind of all emphasized by the three finals MVP awards he took home. Now, Kobe did get two finals MVPs when he won two titles much later, uh, years later, and I think those are really symbolic of Kobe because, let's be honest, he had good teams around him. He didn't have great teams. I mean, he had Pau Gasol, who was playing very well. He had Lamar Odom, guys who made big plays for him, but... Those were good players. There were never players that he had, again, like guys around him, like a Shaquille O'Neal. But the interesting dynamic there is, was Kobe always the best player on his team? And for three of those titles, I would say no, he was not the best player on his team. Kind of makes it difficult to say that. And again, these comparisons are always very, very difficult to make. But I still think when you try to always compare Michael and Kobe— the one thing that they're that they're identical in is regards to their their game. Their individual games are identical of one another. I mean, they, I forget who the YouTube maker was, but there's a YouTube video out there where it literally compares everything about the two, how similar they are from the way they shoot the basketball to the way that they celebrate after making something, the way that they chew gum on the court. The two of them are identical in almost every single way, but the biggest thing that I think separates them is there was never a question that Jordan was the best player on his team. With Kobe, you could very well make the argument that he was not the best player on his team for three of those titles. Now, clearly Shaq and Kobe won those titles together. They ref- they, they played off of each other, but... I think Shaq's dominance is what won them those titles, and it's why he got those three finals MVP awards. But you also have to kind of put it into this into this regard. I think it's a dual throne. When Michael Jordan left the NBA, TV ratings went dramatically down. The game was in trouble when he left. There's no doubt about that. Then you kind of have Kobe burst onto the scene, and Phil Jackson with and the Lakers kind of help revitalize things. But you look at that still, and I think it's it's LeBron and Kobe with a dual throne. If you want to try to say who's the Michael Jordan of our generation, which players have kind of held it down, there's no question, no question in my mind, that it's a dual throne between Kobe and then LeBron James. 12 of the last 15 NBA Finals since 2000 have been involved with LeBron and Kobe Bryant. Think about that for a minute. That is a a, a staggering amount. That just shows how firm control two players have had on the biggest stage. 
they've been in all of the finals except for three of them since the year 2000. That's 15 years where only three of those years, those two players have not been involved in the finals in some way. Now, they haven't all been wins, but just the fact that you've been involved in 12 of 15 of the NBA finals, I think that speaks volumes, and more than anything, it says why it's a dual throne since Jordan left the game where this generation's Jordan is a share. It's a shared spot between Kobe and it's a shared spot between LeBron. But I could always also use the same argument if I'm trying to elevate LeBron over Kobe that, again, was Kobe always the best player on his team? No. Was LeBron? Of course. There's never been a doubt that LeBron James has always been the best basketball player on his team. I mean, his, his first seven years in Cleveland, you couldn't even name another player on the roster. Of course, in Miami, you know, he had Dwayne Wade, he had Chris Bosh. But he won those two finals MVPs. He won the MVP of the league those years. You know and you can't deny it. Don't give me any garbage. He was the best player on the planet. He was playing his best. There's no arguing. He was the best player on his team. It wasn't Wade. Wade struggled. Wade was hobbled. He played best when it mattered most. But he was hobbled. It was a little LeBron show. And I just think it's a very interesting thing to always have. Now, I'll never, still won't take Michael off the crown. I thought if LeBron had won it last year, you could have made the argument, attempted to make the argument that he was the best of all time because of his ability. Again, Michael and Kobe also had the advantage of being in stable organizations that had, I mean, look, there's always going to be drama and egos involved, and sometimes things are, don't always go the best way. But for the most part, they always had people in the front office who knew what they were doing, made the right moves to get the right talent. I mean, when Jordan reloaded for the other three titles, I mean, you got you brought Tony Kukoc in, you had Dennis Rodman in there, you still had Scottie Pippen. They had a perfect array of talent around him. Kobe Bryant, front office, made tremendous decisions, always brought in great supporting cast for Kobe Bryant. LeBron James, sick first seven years, he had to deal with a dysfunctional organization, a dysfunctional owner, uh, a GM that had no idea how to put a, a good talent around him. He had disadvantages that the other two never had, and that's something that you always have to put into perspective for LeBron James, the fact that he had dysfunction on his end, and Kobe and Michael never did. But when it comes to Derrick Rose's quote, I still think you've got to consider from this perspective that it's a dual throne shared between LeBron, shared between Kobe, because Kobe was not always the best player on his team. LeBron always was. Michael always was. And I think, again, people will disagree. This is always going to be a constant battle, trying to determine where Kobe ranks among the all-timers, where LeBron people always want to criticize him. But it's a conversation to have. But I think there's no doubt, and you cannot deny, that Michael was always the best on his team. LeBron was always the best on his team. And Kobe was not always the best on his team. And, and that's going to hold him back in my view of, of being considered the Michael Jordan of our generation. If you're going to be considered the Michael Jordan of our generation, you need to have been the best player for that entire span, and there can't be any arguments about it. And I don't have that feeling of Kobe Bryant. I could make arguments for Tim Duncan. I could make arguments for LeBron James. It's just not the same. It never will be. Michael is just the best there ever was, and there's a reason why that conversation is easier to have. But this one is certainly a different one for for this day, and I think this one... I'm always interested to hear what people have to say, and I know people will comment on this one, but clearly, if you want my opinion, it's a dual throne. It's Kobe. It's LeBron. And until next time, Jersey Joe Archino here with the Sports Ball. You can follow me on Twitter, at Joe Archino, on Instagram, Jersey underscore Joe underscore Archino, and I'll be back very soon.